So in the year 2000, the UN approved the Millennium Development Goals, or the MDGs. The MDGs are a framework of eight goals and wide-ranging practical steps to achieving those goals. The MDGs help to lift more than one billion people out of poverty. So you can see from 1990, there was nearly, um, two, nearly two billion people living on less than $1.25 per day around the world. In 2015, that number uh, reduced to under one billion. So incredible, incredible results, uh, but many were left behind. And there's a really big reason for this. Um, and number one it was that success was measured at the national level, meaning that a country could achieve a goal, but still have millions of people who are not counted or simply left out, um, such as these children on the left side of the screen who presumably were not receiving a basic education. Um, so one example in Vietnam, Vietnam met some of the Millennium Development Goals ahead of schedule. So MDG2, which is around universal primary education, uh, was met early on in the year 2000. But there were huge disparities from within the country. Children from the poorest households were still, I mean, this is recently, as of last year, 2015, still more than twice as likely to die before their fifth birthday as children from the wealthiest, and nearly five times more likely to be out of school. In 2015, the UN adopted a new framework. A core piece of this framework was ensuring that we didn't have, we no longer had these types of disparities and that nobody would be left behind. But how do we get there? We really need to go down below the country level. So measure success, not only at the national level, um, but really get down to what our colleague Javier is in, our, in the audience today, what he called the human level. So really measuring at the micro scale. Um, and one other big change is that these goals are not just for the UN. This is something that we all need to contribute to in order to achieve. So these are the goals. We've moved from eight goals in the Millennium Development Goals to 17 goals. These are called the Sustainable Development Goals and they'll take us from 2015 to 2030 over the next 15 years. Um, simply described, it's really the largest collective effort in history to improve the lives of billions of people by setting quantitative goals and concrete targets around those goals. And the whole thing relies around measuring success and improving the quality of data that we have. So 17 global goals, 169 targets. So each of those 17 goals, um, they're pretty basic, but if you go drill down into the goals a little bit, there's much more detail behind them. And each of them have multiple specific targets. And of course, just to make things even more complex, each of those targets has multiple ways to measure that uh, measure success around the target. So what we ended up with um, recently over the past few months was 230 separate indicators to measure our success. So you can probably guess already, this is a, a huge, going to be a huge undertaking, a huge challenge um, to do this globally. So the UN, um, classified indicators in three ways. So tier one was basically data that we already had was readily available. Tier two, a methodology was established to collect the data, but the data was not easily available. And then tier three, um, there is some, a potential methodology, but really not yet very well developed. So there's lots of questions as you get further down from tier two to tier three. Just ba basic questions in terms of how do we actually measure uh, success against these indicators. So really, we have a huge challenge. Um, and what I'd like to, uh, one of my core points today is that OpenStreetMap and the OpenStreetMap global ecosystem and communities have a huge role to play in this. Um, so there's really a huge need for data, um, and really not only data, but open data and geospatial data. I just took a quote from the UN's um, a General Assembly resolution that was passed uh, late in the fall last year, and I'll, I'll just read it for us all today. Quality, accessible, timely, and reliable disaggregated data will be needed to help with the measurement of progress and to ensure that no one is left behind. So you can see there's a key word there, disaggregated, 
Um, and a big component to disaggregation is geographic location. Um, the national level statistics are no longer good enough. Uh, and so who's, so who's responsible for all, for all this? I'd like to, uh, you know, if you look at the formal sort of viewpoint around these things, um, a prime responsibility is going to fall to national bureaus of statistics around the world. Um, so they typically are seen as having primary responsibility for monitoring our progress against the goals. Um, but the, as you might suspect, there's huge challenges there. M many of, much of the existing data is paper-based in closed systems or just was never collected below the national level. And we also have something called the MDG effect. Um, what this means is that we used to have eight goals and now we have 17 goals. We were used to measuring our success against eight goals. We now have many more that were never measured or we never devised procedures or methodologies to measure success. Um, and there's huge gaps. Some studies have been done. The big gaps are around energy and infrastructure goals, environment and disaster resilience and governance. So you heard, you heard me mention infrastructure, environment. These are things that we're already mapping and measuring in OpenStreetMap. Um, and so under the old system, millions of people simply weren't counted. They were left out of monitoring because they weren't included as part of the maps or as part of the data that was being collected. Um, and the MDGs were oftentimes not disaggregated by things like gender, age, um, geography, disability, income levels. Um, and so some of these things are things we capture in OpenStreetMap, some of them are not. Um, but many of them, especially as it relates to local geographies and local administrative boundaries, are, are core ways that we can help and contribute. And quite simply, government can't go it alone. There's not enough money out there. Um, the number of uh, the resources that it'll take to gather this data is just um, simply overwhelming on a global scale. Um, we really need participation from civil society, from NGOs, uh, from faith-based organizations. Uh, and so I'm going to talk a little bit today about how we get there and, and what we can all be doing as a global OpenStreetMap community. Um, one more country example. This is from Sierra Leone, just showing gaps in data availability. So there was a study done recently called the Post-2015 Data Test. And what this test showed is that, yes, quite frankly, there are big data gaps. So the, in the bar chart here, what you see in orange are areas where simply no data exists. And this was done uh, for about six countries to kind of assess where we, where we couldn't currently stand in terms of data. Some countries are obviously more uh, further along than others, um, but you can see this is quite typical. So in Sierra Leone, there's um, just huge gaps, especially again around energy, infrastructure, environment, and disaster resilience. And these are all things that we have concrete um, examples of how we can collect better data in OpenStreetMap. Uh, sure, you have a question? Yeah, what is the indicators? What, what that uh, so this is just the number of indicators in the Sustainable Development Goal. So how many, um, and I'll, I'll show some examples of indicators so you guys could see more concretely. Uh, but what it's saying is, for example, under, let's look under energy. So under energy, there's eight indicators, and we only have good data in Sierra Leone for two of the eight indicators. <laughs> By yeah, this was worked on by sort of a global, um, it was headed by the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs um, Statistics Division, and there's, there was input from um, sort of a long uh, multi-year process of input from multiple stakeholders out within the UN and outside. Um, so Open geospatial data has a huge role uh, to, to help fill some of um, so just as a quick example, on the left here, this is uh, one of the uh, slum areas in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, called Kigogo. On the right side is what it looked like um, two months later after the humanitarian open street map team was on the ground mapping. And you can see um, these are areas where literally thousands of people live but have never been on the map. Um, and so each of those squares you see on the right is an individual dwelling. Um, these are places that quite simply uh, were invisible prior to our work there. So how can we contribute? So that's, you saw one example. Um, really, it's, it's all about making the invisible visible, um, helping to identify phys physical assets, vulnerabilities in areas around the world, um, working with communities to build their own data sets, 
And then the resulting data is essentially used by decision makers to improve basic service delivery um, for things like route planning for interventions, especially around um, public health, like malaria reduction, getting vaccines to the right places. And quite importantly, the data is also used for monitoring. So with OpenStreetMap, you get more data and you get it much more often than a 10-year census or every two or three-year national survey. So you've, you've heard a little bit about the SDGs. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit more about what communities have been doing already around the world, even though the SDGs are less than one year old. So SDG 3 is good health and well-being, and it really focuses on achieving universal health coverage. So this photo is from Uganda. Uh, one of HOTS team members in Uganda, Douglas, actually uh, visiting health facilities in Uganda um, and recording data on not only where they exist, but what types of um, services are available at these health facilities. And so OpenStreetMap then, you know, it's really serving as a starting point for determining where services are available, what's the catchment area, how many people are uh, served by these types of um, services. Another one, SDG 6, clean water and sanitation. Um, by, the goal is quite lofty. By 2030, achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all, so everyone in the world. Uh, a couple things we're doing here. This photo is from Tanzania, um, and there's a few indicators that are relevant here. So proportion of population using safely managed sanitation services, including hand washing, soap and water. These are things like access to, um, to latrines and basic toilets. And so one of the projects we're working on right now is mapping toilets in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, um, putting those on the map and assessing where gaps exist. Um, goal number eight is around strengthening, or this specific target under goal eight, strengthening the capacity of domestic financial institutions to encourage and expand access to banking, insurance, and financial services. Um, so this is a project that HOT's working on in Uganda with um, generous uh, sponsorship from the Gates Foundation. Really, what we're looking at here are who is included in the formal financial system, who has access to a bank account and can save money. And for those, of, uh, for those who don't have easy access to a bank or ATM, uh, especially in Uganda, mobile money agents is a big one. And so HOTS worked to map these locations, and we've covered already approximately 30,000 financial service locations in Uganda. You can see uh, the map up there on the right. It's a little small, but it gives you an idea of kind of um, the spatial distribution of these locations. So if you can't tell what this is, hopefully you can. Yeah, it's a GPS strapped onto a, a bicycle. Um, and so Goal 11 is around sustainable cities, including, um, this really includes a really broad variety of things, but in particular, um, transportation. And so we're mapping transportation routes. This is from the Ramani Haria team, um, who's uh, the local open street map community in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, mapping bicycle routes. And this is, um, they did this as part of the cycle caravan in Dar es Salaam on World Environment Day, June 5th this year. Um, goal 11, it's not only transportation, it also includes things like access to adequate, safe, and affordable housing. So talking in particular about urban areas where unplanned settlements and slums are on the rise and really expanding um, exponentially. So in Tanzania, the team there also put an area where 1.3 million people live in unplanned settlements onto the map for the first time. And those are some, that's the map you saw a little bit earlier, just one small piece of what they were doing. Um, this is the team in action. So the goals also touch on disaster resilience and people's ability to prepare for, uh, respond to, and recover from disasters. And you'll see as part of target 11.5, it really focuses on reducing number of deaths and number of people affected by disasters, including water-related uh, water disasters. And so this is our team um, sort of standing in probably six inches of water inside a home in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Um, the outputs are pretty incredible. They've mapped to date um, close to one million buildings. 
um, and captured uh, over 2,000 kilometers of roads and mapped 265 kilometers of drainage. So this might be a little surprising. This is not about the data, although maybe I should refine that a little bit. The data is a big piece of it, but it's not the whole picture. Um, it, and this is to say that the data is not meaningful by itself. It's meaningful when the data is used um, to affect positive change and really actually impact people's lives. So what, I, what I'd like to um, posit is that the process is equally valuable as the end product. So through the process of mapping, and these are some of um, the interns we work with in Tanzania, it's really empowering young people to use their skills for social change. Um, they're learning leading open source technology skills. They're learning OpenStreetMap. And through that process, it's also directly contributing to goal eight around fuller employment. So the skills that they're building is help, are helping them to um, receive employment and really opens up their, their job opportunities after, uh, after they do internships with us. And um, so on the, on the left here, you see Dorica. So Dorica is one of our students from uh, Ardi University in Dar es Salaam. And you know, as I talked about this really, the, the work we're doing in the training that the, the students receive, um, it's really contributing to their overall, overall success, um, in not only in the job market, but really providing new skills that they're using outside of, their, outside of the immediate mapping work that they're doing. Um, so, we're, I think we're coming to a close. I have just a few minutes left, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can get involved. But first of all, uh, before I do that, what, what used to be called unofficial data, so you know, crowdsourced data, open street map, volunteer geographic information, it's really moving to a point where it's actually becoming official in many countries. So one example of that is the, this is the Malawi Spatial Data Portal. This includes significant components uh, from OpenStreetMap data extracts. And so I think the key thing here is that in the past, bureaus of statistics were sort of maintaining their own, own data sets and separate data sets from OpenStreetMap. In many places, OpenStreetMap is becoming the, the global standard and is being used by government directly in their work. So how can you help? Um, you can always map with HOT, or you can map with uh, your local OpenStreetMap community. That's, that's great, and we, I encourage you to do that. You, you probably already are doing that in many cases. Um, but there's other things you can do. So think about, as you're doing mapping, um, take a look at those 17 goals again. You can go online, just search SDGs. Um, think about how the work you're doing is contributing to these goals. So this, is, this is a team in, with Mapanika, the Nicaraguan OSM community, um, who created a a map of the entire bus system, entire transportation system in Nicaragua and Managua. You can also contribute to standards. So here's some of the uh, humanitarian and development related mapping standards that are out there right now. There's more in addition to these, but some of these are sector specific. So WASH, that's for example, water and sanitation. Um, these are all very much works in progress. And by having better standards, we can then create more consistent data at the country level and even at the subnational level. And another way you can do that is through Open Map Kit. So Open Map Kit, um, you can actually use these um, standard tagging schemes and create custom forms in Open Map Kit that standardize data collection uh, around those data models. Support young mappers. So young mappers are at the core of what HOT does. It's really the core of the future of OpenStreetMap, and not only the future, but the today of OpenStreetMap. So here's a, a photo of, from Texas Tech. These are youth mappers um, working to contribute to mapping all around the world. Um, number four, you can participate in what's called the Global Partnership for De uh, Sustainable Development Data. Many of you work for organizations who have already made commitments to this partnership, and I'd encourage you if you haven't already made a commitment, check it out and see if it's something that might be relevant for your organization. You can also, so each country is also putting together plans around collecting and using this data. Um, so there's some upcoming workshops in Tanzania and Kenya, um, and they'll continue to expand in the coming months and year. And finally, number five, you can help government decision makers make use of this data. So we really need to do uh, an even better job at promoting that this data is out there, that it's available, 
and working with government to help them understand it and actually use the data as part of their decision-making process. So working with National Bureaus of Statistics, uh, working with urban planning ministries, uh, you guys can all be helping with this. And this is really um, about not only giving them the data, but providing them tools and analysis tools. If you haven't seen it already, this is the OpenStreetMap analytics tool that uh, HOT launched recently with, with some of our partners. This helps you to kind of drill down to the country level and, and analyze the mapping work that's been done. And I'd encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. And this is tips. So that, those are the five official tips. Here's the unofficial one. Um, there's something online. Check out this website, Lazy Person's Guide to Saving the World. These are things you can do kind of as you go about your everyday routine to contribute to the global goals. And I'm going to work to try to get mapping included in there, which is not, it's not in there yet. But that's one of the ones you can do as a, as a level one SOFA superstar. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, thanks very much, guys. I'm going to turn it over now to, to Britta Ricker. Um, she's going to work on getting set up and talking a little bit about um, democratization with drones and how you can be using drones to contribute and work against hegemonic cartographic discourses. So thank you. Thank you.